the 5D and Beyond Wellness Conference and Crystal Workshop here in Austin, Texas. Thank you all so much for being here. So we're going to get started. And our first speaker today is the founder of N5D.com and BodyMindSoulSpirit.com. And he's the sponsor of this conference. He's what makes this possible. He helps millions of people each month with his articles, videos, and his energy updates and his alternative news. And he flew in from Sarasota, Florida to be with us today. And he lives by the Quartz Crystal Sands of Siesta Key Beach, where he holds a monthly meetup. He holds a very special place in my heart. I've known him for four years, and I'm proud and pleased to introduce Greg Prescott. Thank you everyone for being here. It's like being in front of a humongous, beautiful ray of sunshine. It really is. So if you Google N5D, you'll get almost one million results. It's pretty fantastic. N5D gets between one and a half million to over three million visitors every month. 80% of those are introverts <laughs> I see a bunch of introverts out here, so, myself included. So why are we introverts? Well, we go within for the answers. Uh, the extroverts will typically ask for approval, what do you think, but we know that the, all the answers are within. And right now what we're figuring out is that we're not just remembering, but we're re-remembering all of this, and you're gonna find all these synchronicities going on in your life, where you say, I've done this, I've been here before, and it's really fascinating to watch unfold. So we end up learning a lot from our past mistakes, and here's a great example. When I was young, about 14 years old, don't know what I did, but my mom told my dad to get the strap. <laughs> and I know my, my father didn't want to hit me, but uh, as he's coming down with the strap, I tried to get loose, and the strap caught me on my back diagonally. I had fourth period gym class that day. And in, at the end of the third period, I went to the men's room, and I lifted my shirt, and there was still a mark there. And I skipped gym because I was too embarrassed. But that was the day that I swore, if I ever have children, I will never hit them. My daughter's 22, never laid a finger on her. I joke with her though. <laughs> Remember that time I beat the crap out of you for this? She's like, no, <laughs> neither do I. <laughs> it's funny, here's a, a true story too. I learned quantum touch healing, and I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's where you rub your hands together, you envision this ball of energy, and you place it, the energy on whatever part, the person you're trying to heal. So I had a German Shepherd, my last German Shepherd, Bogey, and uh, he was really hyper. He had already gone out, he's been fed and everything, and Brittany and I were in the kitchen. He's just, he's just running around. So, <clears throat> I rub my hands together, true story. I place it on his head, and he lays down and goes to sleep, and my daughter goes, oh my God, Daddy, you killed him. <laughs> I go, you're next. <laughs> That's the kind of relationship I have with my daughter, we joke about stuff like that. So, as many of you know, in 2008, I had a galactic download, and that's like this whole hologram, basically, of information that comes at you. And I got flooded by it, and it told me that I had to do conferences and be a speaker and do radio shows, and of course, to build the website in 5D and they even gave me the name in 5D. I was cool with that, but when they told me, you have to do conferences <laughs> and be a public speaker, and as an introvert, I'm like, no, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> but as I learned, they said, no, you are the one, it's you. And as I learned, I have to be the speaker for the introverts, basically, because I am one myself. You guys have no hard idea how hard it is to be up here speaking, 
But as introverts, we take the highest road and we do what's in the greatest good for humanity. So here we all are. And I'm sure I see introvert, introvert, introvert that are going, going to be speaking later on today. So we're all together and we're all family. So health and wellness has always been a huge part of my life, and that's why I built Body, Mind, Soul, Spirit, because it has a lot of health-related topics on there, as well as spiritual. Now, we went on a Monsters of Rock cruise uh, last month, and uh, I weighed myself beforehand, and when we got back, I gained 6.2 pounds, probably from all the salt and processed food and all the crap that you eat on the boat. But uh, I decided that I'm going to hire a fitness trainer and start eating more healthy. And since then, I've lost 15 pounds. It's more like 16 pounds of fat and putting on a pound of weight of uh, muscle. So my goal is to be healthier and more fit at the age of 57 than I am at 56. But ultimately, you know, this is all about the body, mind, soul, spirit integrating. You have to remember, though, that this is just a shell. It doesn't matter what you weigh or what you look like. It's just a, cell, a shell for the soul. When you face death, it changes your life forever. The Rosicrucians have a saying that your goal in life is not to be happy. Happiness is an emotion. Your goal in life is to experience as much as possible. And within those experiences, you'll find happiness. One of those experiences for me happened in 2007. I had stage three cancer melanoma on my back. And uh, I went to the pool, I was in a subdivision, we had our own little pool, and one of my pool people was next to me, and she had numerous cancer removed from her. And she said, Greg, you have to get that checked out. And I did. And that's when I found out how bad it was. And it had spread to my glands under my arms and in my groin. So of course, they always say that you, know, you have three options, surgery, chemo, and radiation. I said, just cut it out, and that's all I want. Just get rid of it. At the time, I was using Copper Tone Sport Spray. And I lathered myself with it all over my body. And uh, Copper Tone has two ingredients that you'll find probably in about 75 to 80% of all sun sunscreens. Retinal palmitate, which is a synthetic vitamin A, and oxybenzone. According to Dr. Joseph McCola and Dr. Leonard Coldwell, they believe that sunscreen is the cause of skin cancer. According to Dr. Mercola, oxybenzone and ret retinal palmitate should be avoided. Oxybenzone itself is found in about 65% of all sunscreens. The FDA, there's an FDA study that found that, that found when retinal palmitate is exposed to sunlight, it may actually speed the development of cancer. And you have this in about 75, 80% of all sunscreen. Now, this is according to Dr. Leonard Coldwell. Sunscreens cause cancer, period. <laughs> He's adamant about that. The Consumer Watchdog Environmental Working Group, EWG, reported that almost half of the popular sunscreens on the market actually accelerate the, develop the development of malignant skin cancer cells. And here's some cancer trivia that I found really fascinating by Dr. Coldwell. In the last 20 years, nobody's died of cancer. They've all died from the side effects of cancer. Cancer is the biggest money maker in history for the pharmaceutical industry, which generates about $163 billion every year in just cancer. The medical profession has a cancer cure rate of 2%. If you do nothing, you have a 27% chance of recovery. We're all born with cancer and cancerous cells, and our immune system gets rid of them from day one. And the only cause for illness is a lack of energy. The main cause for a lack of energy is physical and emotional stress. So this is why it's really important to keep your vibrations high and to stay grounded. 
and bad relationships are the main cause of cancer. So if you're in a cancerous relationship, beware. Now, when I got my cancer, it was at the end of my second marriage, and it, was, it wasn't a good relationship. We were going in completely opposite directions. And the cancer was on my right-hand side of my body. Now, anyone that does QHHT, Candace, knows that when you have these things that pop up on your right-hand side of your body, that's current life. Anything on the left-hand side is a past life. So the cancer from my relationship was actually manifesting through this bad relationship. According to Dr. Coldwell, there are over 300 to 400 cures for cancer that have virtually no side effects. And one of those cures is a Rife machine. Are you guys familiar with that? Well, for those who aren't, it's a light it's a, the Rife is a light frequency resonance that resonates to a specific frequency. So hypothetically, if cancer is resonating at a frequency of 135, they can dial the frequency in and eradicate the cancer through the frequency. So the medical industry thought that Rife was a quack, so in 1934 they gave him 16 terminally ill cancer patients. And within two months, he cured 14 out of the 16. And within the, within the following two weeks, he, he cured the remaining two. 100% cure rate. So what happened? His labs were burned. A uh, physician who duplicated all of his work was killed in a fire that destroyed all of his papers. Another fire destroyed a lab that was validating Royal Rife's work, and in 1971, Rife was killed by an accidental overdose of Valium and alcohol. As I mentioned, cancer is a $163 billion a year industry. They don't want a cure. The last thing that Big Pharma cured was polio, and they realized that there's no repeat business in it. So, the next thing I really want to talk about is the John of God bed. Has anyone tried the John of God bed here? We have a couple of people here. Now, some people think that they need to remove their chakras. I'm not one of those people. I think that, and I'm going to tell you why in a second, but if it wasn't for my chakras, the John of God bed wouldn't work. Now, what the John of God bed is, is it's a basically a massage table with a sheet on it and a pillow, and you lay down on it, and they place a cloth over your eyes, and you're listening to ambient music. Above you are these lights lined up to all of your chakras, and they're flashing intermittently. And while you're on this bed, these beings of light come in and work on you, whatever the intention that you need worked on. So I remember, I think it was 2013, when we went to New York, uh, Michelle was making an appointment to visit our psychic friend, Cindy Staffen, and we went into her office, and there was a John of God bed there. And one of her assistants there, I got into a conversation with, it, and I asked her, does it heal sciatica? Because I've had this sciatica issue for over 25 years, and it's excruciating. It's an L3, L4 compression, pinching the nerve on my left-hand side of my body, past life, and going all the way down to my toes. And she said, yeah, it cures everything. So I'm like, okay, well, I tried Quantum Touch, I tried Reiki, I tried all these different holistic methods, I'll give it a shot. So I did that, it was a 45 minute treatment, I'm laying down on the uh, John of God bed, just relaxed, I caught myself snoring a couple times, that relaxed, but what ended up happening was, I, I got done, that evening we went to a metaphysical meetup, and Cindy and Michelle had me leaning over a chair, like this, and they energetically pulled out those cords that were causing me pain as well. So I got an extra benefit, not only from the John of God, but from Cindy and Michelle. Within three days, my sciatica was gone. It's been gone ever since. And anyone that knows sciatica pain, I can jog the beach. Before I could only walk maybe 100 yards before having to squat down and stretch my back. I consider the John of God bed more of a miracle than beating cancer, because the cancer wasn't excruciating. So, I still have numbness in my toes. And I, I, I know that Eric Grains tried to get rid of it, I've had other people trying to get rid of it, but Cindy Staffan already told me why. 
the psychic that I, we went to. She told me why. She said it's to re keep. It's a reminder to have gratitude for no longer having the pain. <coughs> and gratitude is huge. Every day when I go to the beach, I do a walk of gratitude where I walk to the end of the beach. And I thank Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit Guides, Guardian Angels, Friends and Family on both sides of the veil, Galactic Neighbors and Friends, Higher Self, and Mother Earth for everything I'm grateful for. And I do Ho'oponopono where I say I'm sorry if I don't say this as often as I should. Please forgive me. Thank you for giving me unconditional love, safety, support, and protection, and abundance in everything that's good in life as I promise to listen with open eyes, ears, mind, and heart. And more than anything, I love you all. And then I do what I call a love bubble meditation, where I ask my posse to join me and to spread that, that unconditional love and healing energy throughout the beach and extend it as far as they can throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, and multiverse. So even when I, as a workaholic, and I go to the beach to ground, I'm still working. <laughs> so it's hard to get away from work, but I do it. It doesn't even feel like work. So you just do it because it's the right thing to do. So we all have these uh, exit points in our life, and it's kind of like driving down a road. You know, you have this exit here. I had this exit point for cancer in 2008, and I'm like, nope, gonna keep driving. <laughs> Not taking that exit. Well, in the late 1990s, my I had this uh, Nissan Sentra, which was a rust bucket. You could actually see through the floorboards. It's kind of like Fred Flintstone's car. You know, <laughs> you can see the pavement below you. And uh, it was really, really old and beat. My father, he had just retired from the medical industry and uh, he gave me his car. It was a Chevy Lumina. Two weeks later, a guy runs a stop sign. I'm doing 60 miles an hour, I plow into him. If I had the uh, Nissan Sentra, none of us would be here right now. That was another exit point. So my father saved my life on that one. And uh, you know, I lost my sister, Lola, in 2011 and she was on dialysis, but she died from ovarian cancer ultimately. And uh, at the age of 53, that was her exit point. And I love her and I miss her, but I'm happy for her. What's, she visits me in my dreams. Do any of you see old people in your dreams? Or do you, did, let me ask this, does anyone just see young people in their dreams? Just one, two, three, four. A few of us, and it's really strange. I don't see old people. Everyone's young. I'm. 28, Michelle's like 23, everyone is young. My parents are the oldest people I see and they're probably 40, if that. I just don't see young people. The last thing I wanna talk about are the energies that are going on right now. And it's really fascinating to see what's happening because when you know what you know at this point in the game, you're watching as an observer. And you can see the world crumble down around you, but it's not affecting you. Right now, these energies are showing shadow, shadow self issues, and the masks are coming off people. And we're gonna see people, even in this genre ourselves, losing it, basically. And uh, send them love, send them energy. The energies are incompatible for those who are of lower vibration, and any addictions will only magnify that. These people, regardless of who they are, will stick out like a sore thumb uh, with drastic mood swings, erratic behavior, paranoia, and will try to take down as many people as possible with them. Keep your energy high, stay grounded. This is the most important things that you can do right now. If you don't remember anything from this presentation, remember this. Keep your vibration high and stay grounded, number one. And like I said, while it seems like everything around you is falling apart, you'll be watching as the observer. Always take the high road, don't drown to, drop down to their level because then you get into a war of energy, vampirism. You don't want that. And uh, three things I keep getting over and over and over again from my guides. Love, forgive, and express gratitude. First thing I said was, thank you all for being here. I'm so grateful that you're all here. And I want to close with that. And if anyone has any questions, I can take some questions right now for a few minutes. Don't be shy. Yeah. 
She didn't weigh anything. anything. Any questions about NYD or anything that you've read on body, mind, soul, spirit, or any personal questions? Yeah. I just wanted to ask, what is your favorite way to increase your vibration? Beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Siesta Key has the 99.9% .9 quartz crystal sand. It's magical. As soon as I stepped foot on there, I knew I had to live there. And then we have the drum circles there every Sunday, and it's magical. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Else? I think okay. Sammy helps out a lot too with that, don't you? Definitely. I think that's a huge part of your life. Definitely. Well. Thank you. Oh yeah. Right, you yeah. said about energy, do you feel the energy flows through your chakras? Definitely. Um, it gets stronger together, right? Yes. And it can be very, how should I say, it can be very discomforting Yes, yes. Um, I have a lot of movement mm -hmm. the energy, so I wonder if you can. Sometimes You'll... it's so strong that I have to like, uh -huh. move to release it. Right, right. So I just, I just know that when I'm imbalanced, it's time to go on the ground. It's time to do something outside, connect with nature. Yeah, yeah. I, I do that in the morning. Mm -hmm. What do you do to ground? I uh, look barefoot to stay mm -hmm. there, and I wake up right, usually right before sunrise now, and just right in front of the sun and just mm -hmm. ground myself. And sometimes I put the hands in the tree. Nice. Um, between the bottom of our feet and Mother Earth. Um, and so consciously, you'll want to try to clear that block and make sure that you have a really good connection with it. <coughs> and that's going to help the energy. Anyone else? Okay. Greg, I don't have a question, but okay. um, on behalf of everyone here and everyone in the universe and the multiverse, as you said, I just want to thank you uh, and Michelle. I, I, as an entrepreneur for the last 20 years, know how hard it is to sustain a business and thankfully I've been very successful in the 20 years and I have no idea what it takes to keep up what you guys are doing and to create that database and have that information available. I know that um, I'm very aware of that technology and so I, I can't imagine how you guys stay afloat and do what you do. And for me, uh, it blows my mind that I'm in Austin, one of the most thriving cities in terms of human potential in the country. and. Um, crowd is this whole hotel and sold out to be here so I just know that um, I'm very grateful and um, I have no idea what it takes but um, on behalf of everyone in the universe and the multiverses and in this room thank you Kevin. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, um, I researched the John of Godhead for mm -hmm. quite some time trying to find one or buy one yes. and I looked and looked and googled every type of I didn't want to go to Brazil. Mm. I can't afford it right now. But um, <laughs> then one day I used the same internet search term. There's one like a couple of miles from my house. <laughs> so many of you live in the Austin area. I'm trying to think of her name. I think I found it indirectly through Austin Alchemist. There, but she does. She has it. She went to Brazil. It is a John God bed <clears> and. Just go, you send her an email. She's in the Lakeway area, which is just outside of Austin. And um, she just takes a donation, whatever you can afford. And so if anybody's interested awesome. in it, thank you. right here. Thank you. It is thank you. amazing. It is. We used to drive through Lakeway when I was seven. I lived out on Lake Travis. So we, I lived in Lago Vista. We should drive through the Lakeway area. Remember my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.